What if you could give your children the most valuable gift of all? One worth more than gold. And that gift could actually be passed from your children to your grandchildren and even beyond, rippling forward, providing them all the same miraculous gift. Now, of course, I am not talking about the latest cell phone. I'm talking about the gift of health. So let me tell you how I came to be here today. From an early age, healthy food was a part of my life. I was that kid that loved broccoli and spinach. Uh, but after I began medical school, the time challenges meant that my self-care became secondary, really, to my education. And it was at that time, at age 24, that I was diagnosed with autoimmune arthritis. Now, like most of the autoimmune diseases, there is no cure, and the bottom line was that this was going to be a chronic disease to affect me for the rest of my life. Okay, so moving forward to today, I've been a pediatric radiologist, actually, for over 20 years, for the first half at Stanford University and the second half here in Central Florida. And it was in that time that I really started to notice that we're having a dramatic change in the health of children, with a sharp rise occurring in childhood chronic disease. Now, I think we have all probably been noticing an increase in childhood obesity, but in the medical professions, we're also seeing diseases that go along with that, like fatty liver disease, type 2 diabetes, and even the autoimmune diseases. You know, all issues that promise a lifetime of health consequences. As a mother, uh, this was a scary realization because I know, as parents, we want the best for our kids. We want them to have excellent health, not be burdened with disease. And so I had this thought, if these diseases have been increasing so recently, there has to be something we can do to turn them back around. So I dove into the medical literature, and what I found was so powerful and so hopeful that I actually decided to leave my medical practice to try to get this information out to as many people as I could. And that's what brings me here today. So now you're probably all wondering, what was this powerful information? What did I find? Well, the medical literature shows us that it is our lifestyle and primarily our diet that are the cause of poor health for adults and now also for our kids. And if we think about it, actually, this makes sense because other than the air that we breathe, the only fuel of our miraculous body and mind is what we eat and drink. So how did we get to this place where the food that's supposed to nourish our bodies is actually damaging our health? To understand that, I want to take you back in time. As humans, our ancestors have lived millions of years on this earth, first as gatherers, then hunter-gatherers, traveling from place to place in search of food. And the vast majority of what we ate was a wide variety of whole plant foods, supplemented with some animal foods when we could find them, but really the backbone of our diet was whole plant foods, and it's elements of these plant foods, like phytonutrients and fiber, that our bodies actually learned to use for our health. Okay, so phytonutrients. What are phytonutrients? These are plant chemicals. They're chemicals a plant makes for its own protection. And you may have heard of some of these, like maybe you've heard of uh, sulforaphane in broccoli or anthocyanins in blueberries, or how about resveratrol in red wine? Okay, some people have heard of that one. Okay, so it's these same nutrients that get absorbed from our plant foods and they circulate in our bloodstream and they bathe our cells. And our cells have actually learned to use these very elements to protect us against disease. As an example of this, a study from Johns Hopkins University in 2010 showed that when we eat mushrooms, the ergothionine from those mushrooms gets absorbed and when it bathes our cells, our cells actually have receptors specific for ergothionine. They grab onto it, bring it into the cell to repair our own DNA. And that's only one of millions of phytonutrients. 
Okay, now what about fiber? Fiber also only comes from plant foods. It is, really most of it is the cell wall of the plant cell. Now we as humans don't digest fiber. So after we've absorbed the nutrients from our plant food, the fiber makes it to the last part of our gut where our microbiome, the trillions of bacteria in our gut live. And we have a symbiotic relationship with these bacteria. We provide them a home, our body, and food, that fiber, and they, they love that fiber, they break that fiber down and they pump out chemicals for our own health, including some of the most disease-preventive chemicals that we have ever found, the short-chain fatty acids. Okay, so it is clear that plant foods, whole plant foods, provide us protection against disease. But now, as compared to those millions of years as hunter-gatherers, our food environment has now changed rapidly and dramatically in recent years. Food subsidies created a century ago mean that now our diet is almost exclusively made up of the products of those few subsidized foods. And those products now make up over 90% of our diet, and they are cheap ultra-processed foods and cheap animal foods. All right, so let's define ultra-processed food. These are the packaged convenience foods that we find in the center of the grocery store that have long lists of ingredients. And really the best way to tell an ultra-processed food is that it contains ingredients that you would never find in your own kitchen. These are foods that now come from a factory and not a farm. And in a disturbing study from Tufts University in 2021, they showed that the proportion of our diet made up of ultra-processed foods continues to increase. We know that for adults, a shocking 60% of our diet comes from ultra-processed foods. But for our kids, it's even worse. For our kids and teens, 70% of their diet now comes from ultra-processed foods. And this is actually from age two on up. 70%. Wow, how did we get here? Well, the scientific research shows us that Really, it is, it's a combination of things, and that includes the fact that we have fallen prey to the marketing of the big food companies, as well as the lure of convenience. And we trusted that these extremely altered foods were still going to meet our nutritional needs, but they don't. Because you see, the fiber and phytonutrients we just talked about in the processing are removed, and chemicals are added. And so while these foods might seem like they're convenient in the short term, right, they're quick and easy, the long-term consequences that we know go along with eating these ultra-processed foods, like cancer, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and even early death, okay, these things are anything but convenient. Okay, so that's 60 to 70% of our diet comes from ultra-processed foods. And now 30% of our diet comes from animal foods, and these have issues of their own. For example, our love for cheese, and isn't cheese in everything, uh, means that um, the saturated fat in our diet is now higher than it should be. And we know saturated fat is directly linked to our number one killer in this country, heart disease. Also, the World Health Organization, after having examined all the scientific evidence, warns us that the eating of red meat and processed meat are associated with an increased incidence of cancer. Okay, 60 to 70% of our diet is ultra-processed foods. 30% of our diet is animal foods. Now, this leaves then less than 10% of our diet made up of those whole plant foods that we know protect us against disease. And this is the issue at the heart of the health crisis of today. Too many ultra-processed foods and animal foods and too few whole plant foods. The prevalence of chronic disease in our country has increased now from 8% in the 1930s to 60% today. 
And we know that we're in the middle of an obesity epidemic, with 40% of us suffering with obesity. Also, the diseases that we talked about that go along with eating too many uh, animal foods and ultra-processed foods like cancer and heart disease are now commonplace, right? We see them all around us affecting the people that we love. So, what's the solution? Eating more whole plant foods, right? And in a world where we have conflicting information coming at us from every avenue, we don't know what to trust. There is no debate on the healthful effects of whole plant foods. We know a diet centered on whole plant foods protects us against cancer, heart disease, hypertension, obesity, depression, dementia, diabetes, and even infectious disease like COVID. In a really amazing study, from Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in 2021, they showed that if compared to the Western diet, the one that we eat in America, if instead you eat a plant-centered diet, you're 73% less likely to suffer from moderate to severe COVID symptoms. Now, of course, this doesn't mean you're not gonna get COVID, but what it does mean is that if you do, you're 73% less likely to be hospitalized or to die from it. That's the power of plant foods, right? If that was a pill, we would all be rushing out the door to get that right now. But the good news is we don't need a pill. We can get this at our grocery store and at our farmer's market. So um, I, knowing now what I know about our diet and whole plant foods, I am now eat a plant-based diet, and I, um, and this has actually kept my autoimmune disease at bay for years now. So you can see why I am so passionate about sharing this information with you, because I want you to know that you have the power to improve your health destiny by eating more whole plant foods, and I don't want you to believe for a minute that your genes are your destiny, because our genes, our DNA, it turns out are only responsible for about 20% of the chronic disease that we see all around us. And now, the reason that chronic disease appears to run in families actually is because our diet and lifestyle are shared, and this makes up 80% of the risk. 80%, so this gives us tremendous power. We have the power to change this health destiny. So knowing what we all know now, and I know you guys are armed with some information, we are going to now um, look at our food as nourishment, something that's worthy of our time, our effort, and our resources. And we are going to reject the Western diet and look instead to traditional ways of interacting with our food, like reclaiming the kitchen as the center of our home because it is central to human life and health. Also, we are going to, of course, include our kids in choosing cooking and maybe even growing healthy food. And we can look at recipe inspiration from our cultures of origin because they were all based on whole plant foods. That's what was available. And of course, we also can start to rely on a new type of convenience food like canned beans, washed and bagged greens, and frozen fruit, keeping these on hand, ready to help up any meal. And so these are just some tools we can use to help create positive memories and experiences around healthy food. And we will all reap the benefits. So let's do this, let's give the most valuable gift of all health to our kids and ourselves by eating more whole plant foods every day at every meal. Thank you. <laughs>